Today we're talking about the airline industry's golden parachute. That's right, the federal government is implementing a massive airline bailout and they're currently trying to figure out whether to go economy, business class, or heck, a few republicans are even asking if there's still any room left in the exit row. I'm going to try to explain an unexpected debate about the terms of the bailout and then I'm going to try to go into the weeds on what this bailout might end up looking like. But first, the odd debate. Because for once on this show, I want to eat dessert before dinner. Top Democratic lawmakers have urged Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin to quickly provide American Airlines with direct payroll assistance, and to avoid insisting on overly restrictive terms that could deter companies from taking the money. Then that might seem odd, considering I mean the Democrats entire brand in this debate was putting as many restrictions on money as possible. It's like watching Smokey the Bear maul a park ranger. That would explain where he got the hat though. So what happened? Well back then the fight was over workers rights. Now the fight is over the actual financial terms of the loan. There's growing concern within the industry that Mr. Mnuchin will demand strict terms to ensure that taxpayers are compensated such as large equity stakes in the companies. Yes, the tables have turned, with Democrats looking to turn on that money hose, while Republicans are saying, hold on, is this the best deal we can get? I want equity stake. Now, Democrats are having a different yet equally negative reaction to this idea than Republicans did in 2008. They tell us it's not the nationalization of the car business, but it sounds close enough to government work for me. Anyway, does anybody really think the federal government knows anything about the car business? If you like the way the federal government fouled up the mortgage industry by over-regulating Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac that has cost the taxpayers billions, or you like the way the federal government controls passenger rail service with Amtrak that loses billions of dollars every, every year, you'll love the way the federal bureaucrats make new cars. I guess soon it truly could be American Airlines. In defense of this plan though, Trump did such a great job last time he ran an airline. Instead, Democrats are now saying taking equity and other onerous non-labor demands are going to make these loans too unappealing for corporations, and they might not take our money, instead opting to lay off more workers or going bankrupt. In an open letter that was sent to Mr. Mnuchin, which is the boomer generation's equivalent of a Twitter post. Senator Chuck Schumer and Speaker Nancy Pelosi wrote, Assistance must not come with unreasonable conditions that would force an employer to choose bankruptcy instead of providing payroll grants to its workers. On the other hand, we could make quite a bit of money as the federal government if we play our hands right on this one. I mean, they got into this mess because they spent all their cash on stock buybacks. Those could be our stock. I really see both sides of this argument, because our goal here is to keep people employed and not to see the federal government turn into a hedge fund, but it would be nice to see a bailout pay for itself. Keep this debate in your mind for the second half of this episode, because oh boy a lot more of this is up in the air, pun intended, than I thought. So now I want to take a step into the weeds, because how can this debate even be happening right now? Didn't we, uh, I don't know, figure this out when we passed the bill? Nope, what the bill did was earmark $25 billion in grants and another $25 billion in loans for the industry. Cargo carriers were also allocated $8 billion of grants and loans. Beyond that, it said, hey, Steve Mnuchin, figure it out. There is a specific line in the bill that says that the secretary, meaning me, will determine proper compensation, so this is not a bailout for the airlines, and I will be working, once we get our advice from our financial advisors, we get the applications from the airlines, I'll be working very closely with the president, and we'll make sure that we strike the right balance, not a bailout, taxpayers get compensated, but the, these airlines, these are national security issues, we want to keep our airlines intact. Yeah, this not bailout effort is being led by Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin, with money allocated from Congress. Now that money has specific purposes behind it, so we can't turn around and use it to, say, bail out the shale industry. Now that's not a random industry that just popped in my head, 
he was asked that very specific question. Senator Murkowski has asked you to consider uh, providing loans to energy companies under the CARES Act, the Phase 3 bill. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Would you consider providing those loans to energy companies? So, th thank you, and let me clarify. I have very limited ability to do direct loans out of the Treasury. I can do them for passenger airlines, cargo airlines, contractors, and national security companies. Outside of that, we work with the Federal Reserve to create broad-based lending facilities, which we will do. I just made an episode about those broad-based lending facilities. Link at the end or awkwardly stuffed in the corner of this video. With that understanding of the guardrails, let's get into the meat of what's going on. I'm going to focus on the airlines because that's where the bulk of this money is going. The Treasury can make $25 billion in loans and $25 billion in grants. Now as my glaze over there because how different are grants and loans? Well, it's nights and oranges. Not even opposites, just two very different ideas. First we have grants. This is cash that you don't have to pay back. Sounds like a good deal, sign me up for that one. Before you sign the contract though, there's a bit of fine print that Steve Mnuchin can add to any grant deal if he so desires. Guidelines for the grants issued earlier this week state that the Treasury Department is authorized to receive compensation in the form of warrants, options, preferred stocks, and other securities in exchange for those grants. We should at least get some miles out of this deal. As I said earlier, we are currently trying to figure out what the cost of cash should be for the airline industry. But it seems as though Steve Mnuchin, in his ongoing quest to be exclusively sat next to the bathroom and between a bunch of manically depressed babies on flights, is going to push for the most expensive deal out there. The purpose of these grants is very specific. Carriers had until Friday to apply for $25 billion in grants in exchange for not furloughing workers or cutting their pay rates through September 30th. Yep, we'll give you $25 billion to keep up the good work? Nah, eh, just keep up the work. This brings us to the other $25 billion endeavor, airline loans. This is money that will have to be paid back to the government later. You know, a loan. That's pretty clear. What's less clear are the terms of the loans. If any carriers look to borrow from the government's $25 billion loan package. Should any airline ultimately apply for a loan, language on securitization is vague, stating that applicants would have to post collateral or that loans would be made at rates that reflect risk. Again, we've got $25 billion to loan out, but terms are negotiable. Everything is on the table for collateral from stocks to literal airplanes. Who knows, the next Air Force One plane might come with seats that recline just far enough to make the person behind you feel slightly claustrophobic while offering no relief to anyone. <sighs> I confess, when I started writing this episode, I expected things to be a lot more settled than they currently are. As things stand, we know we're handing out $15 billion to airlines, half in loans and half in grants, but beyond that, well, right now it's really up to Mnuchin and the industry leaders to figure out in the coming weeks what's gonna happen. I'll keep you posted on updates as they come in, but until then, thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I'd like to thank my patrons for helping me put out my videos. If you want to support independent nonpartisan news looking into the overlooked, Join this growing list of exceptional individuals by clicking on that link in the description. Who knows, maybe someday this will be my real view instead of something I occasionally knock over when I spin in my chair while recording. Uh oh. So I have been breaking down this 2 trillion dollar spending bill, and click here if you want to learn how we're spending 500 billion dollars in corporate slush funds that was created. And click here to, for my analysis of Americans getting checks for $1,200. Also remember to subscribe and ring that bell so the freedom will continue to ring. Give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw. And lastly, as always, thank you for watching.